Welcome to the hands-on microservices with Go and MongoDB video tutorial. My name is Gautam Rege, and uh, this is the course overview. I have about 20 years of experience uh, programming. I am the co-founder of Josh Software. I started it in 2007-2008. Uh, I have uh, been writing a couple of books in Ruby and MongoDB. I love speaking. That's quite obvious, as you all can see. I speak at various technical conferences around the world, and I love to code. Over the course of this uh, tutorial, you will see a lot of code, and I hope you enjoy it. As part of the course overview, I'd like to take you all through the various sections that we have so that you all understand what all we're trying to build. In section one, the big picture, I'll try and show you all what we're trying to achieve, what we're trying to build, so that there is a practical use case to all this, and we're building on the go. So we'll have a hands-on way of deciding, you know, what we want to do here so that we actually learn the development process, not just the end result. In section two, we'll have a full-fledged working result. But it'll be treated like a science project. Then in section three, we'll look at it in the more professional approach of not just trying to make it work, but also try to make it work right. Section four, we will start seeing how different microservices communicate between each other using gRPC. Section five, we'll understand the importance of abstraction and automation to help in our testing to help in scalability, to help in the abstraction of maybe databases. We'll see a lot of interfaces coming into the picture. Section six, we will actually take the functionality, split it into a single responsibility principle, make multiple microservices, and stitch all this together using a high-level web proxy. Lastly, in section seven, We'll talk about all the things that are already available, the tools which are there, the frameworks which are available, uh, how to work with authentication and try it in, uh, in the real world, what do people do? I hope you all will enjoy this because by the end of this course, we are going to see how we build scalable, extensible microservices. In this particular tutorial, obviously we'll be using Go and MongoDB. I also discuss practical use cases depending on the choice of database or choice of language too. It is important to design microservices well so that they are better scalable and tested. And we'll look at real world examples whenever we can. I always believe in the principle of doing it once and doing it right. So always choose the right tool for the job. How do we test microservices? Because there is no programming complete without testing. And as far as we can see, I will try and ensure that we have a lot of fun along the way. Of course, there are certain prerequisites that we definitely require. I hope you all are familiar with Go programming because I do not talk about the nuances of Go and different aspects and features of uh, the Go programming language. I also do not take a deep dive into how and why MongoDB works the way it is, but I hope that you all have an instance of MongoDB at least running locally Worst case, use cloud installed, but I would prefer if you just have some Docker instance or just MongoDB running locally. The last one is a bit of a disclaimer for me. I come from a background of Vim, and that's the only editor I know how to use. I have tried a lot of different editors. Uh, I've tried Sublime and IntelliJ and uh, Atom. <laughs> I've seen plenty of them, and I always fall back to my favorite Vim. You are, of course, free to use VS Code or Sublime or any other editor of your own choice as long as your code has syntax highlighting, it has a proper indentation, some of them are properly searchable with different components of Go plugins enabled. So let's begin this journey and uh, you will have all these code files for reference. You can definitely refer to different sections and the code that we are building over time. So without further ado, let's get started.